My name is Holly Holman. I'm the General Counsel for the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty in Washington. That means I'm responsible for, sort of for our legal program to monitor Congress and the courts with regard to issues of church-state separation. Well, I was delighted to be invited to Gardner Webb for several opportunities to be with the students and the, um, the university community. I spoke last night with the LOTS community, the Life of the Scholar community that sponsors a series of lectures and gave a lecture on religion and, pres and the presidency and uh, particularly election 2012, which is a great opportunity to talk about um, our legal context and then see how we're doing in practice as we go through a presidential election. And then this morning, I was able to speak um, to the Dimensions in the Dimensions program um, to give a little bit of background about what the Baptist Joint Committee for Religious Liberty stands for and what we do and how we are inspired by the historic Baptist principles um, to do the work that we do in Washington. And I look forward to um, also speaking to a, a, a political science course on Congress and the Presidency today and have had an opportunity in between these events to talk to different students um, throughout the university. Okay. These students are in a university setting in order to expand their mind to learn all that a university can teach them. And if the university doesn't prepare them to be active citizens in our democracy, I think the university is not doing its job. And it was wonderful to see that uh, Gardner-Webb takes that very seriously, then it encourages um, is really working to encourage more engagement um, in political matters, not for any partisan reasons, but just for the development of good citizenship. I mean, we are lucky to live in a country where we elect our own leaders, and uh, I'm hoping that students that are in college at this time, watching sort of the changes in the Middle East and the fight of young people to change their government, to give them more of a voice, will inspire them to claim the voice that they have. For Baptists, if you're claiming any kind of religious tradition, you uh, rely on a certain amount of freedom to act on those principles. And in America, that is protected. And it is protected largely because of efforts of religious people who fought for that freedom. That power was, that was not given easily. Um, so I think it's very important to remember that historical reason for your freedom because that makes you appreciate it and exercise it um, responsibly. I think as Americans, um, we should be proud that um, when it comes to religious freedom, we're the envy of the world and that if we don't um, maintain that freedom we stand to lose quite a bit. Um, it is unfortunate that so many people take it for granted, would turn their freedom over to partisan politics that would divide us among religious lines. The founders very ably and um, with great genius um, set up a system that removed religion as a basis for governing. Not, not removed it, they didn't remove it from any influence. We have great religious influence in our society, but as a matter of government, um, they created a government that is free for all people and is not defined by any particular religious tradition. They want to elect people that they feel like share their values, um, and that's understandable. Um, but we make a real mistake when we equate a political party or a candidate with our religious affiliation or with our, if we, if we equate our governmental leaders with our religious leaders or with our God, with our commitment to Christ. Um, it is important to recognize sort of that we are citizens of two kingdoms. We are citizens of our political community and in that citizenship we have responsibility to all in our political community and those people that we elect we elect to serve all um, we do not elect our officials to lead our churches um, we are also of course citizens of the kingdom of God and so it's important to just to recognize sort of the dual citizenship we have um, I think what I always encourage is people not to get those confused um, to educate yourself as a citizen and um, know that that uh, government officials are responsible to all citizens without regard to religion and that's as it should be. Um, at the same time uh, as Christians we can ask our government officials the hard questions and tell them what our values are um, but we should not try to apply a religious test we should stand by our founders design of a government that does not equate political citizenship with our religious views and um, be very careful that we guard that and um, be glad that there are people being raised in various religious traditions that are strong Americans and can be wonderful leaders. That's the kind of country that we have. Yeah. It is a life's work. 
to figure out how to use the freedom that we're given. One, to recognize it, to claim it, to know that God wants you to have that, wants you to see um, God's work alive in the world. If you don't um, claim that freedom, you might be convinced that um, that God is sort of restricted, restricted by rules, restricted by religion sometimes, instead of being um, alive. Um, as Christians, we're taught that we are free in Christ and that we worship a living God that works not just in historic biblical times, but every day. And you have to sort of claim that freedom to be alive, to question um, the world and what you're being called to do and how you act in it um, to to be to answer to God. So <clears throat> I think the the call to freedom um, that I that I always try to look to and struggle with is to um, exercise that freedom of uh, the love of Christ that cannot be held by any government, certainly cannot be defined by a Republican or a Democrat in the, their vision for America, but is much greater than that. I think we are um, called to use our our freedom responsibly in service and love to one another. But I am uh, honored to be part of um, the Gardner-Webb University education experience and inspired by the students that I've met, uh, that they are waking up, as all university students must, wake up to their engagement in the world and to kind of apply apply their, their freedom in constructive ways. And so I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thanks so much for sharing with us.